You're listening to Money FM 89.3, and it's now time for Under the Radar with me, Chua Tian Tian. Now, it's all about music and concerts today. With a legacy that spans over 200 years, Warner Music Group brings together songwriters, artists, and entrepreneurs that are moving entertainment culture across the world. Now, the firm has a recorded music division that operates in over 70 countries via a network of affiliate and licensees. That includes a number of uh, renowned labels, including 300 Entertainment, and manages some of the biggest A-listers in the world, including Coldplay, Bruno Mars, and Ed Sheeran. Now, aside from managing singers and bands and distributing music, the firm also has a music publishing arm called Warner Chapel Music, where it hosts over 1 million copyrights of songs across genres. So how exactly does an entertainment company like Warner Music Group operate? And what is the difference between the operations of the published and recorded music departments? Now, also, the group recently reported improved streaming growth uh, driven by a stronger release slate. But what is the situation here in Singapore. Well, for more, let's speak to Gerald Ong, Managing Director at Warner Music Singapore. Gerald, welcome to the show. Good morning and thank you for having me. Great to have you on board. And uh, we've briefly talked about Warner Music Group in the introduction, Gerald, but we really want to hear it directly from the source. What would you say is uh, Warner Music Group's value proposition and business model and how does Warner Music Singapore fit in the group's bigger portfolio? Yeah, of course. Now, like you mentioned earlier, we are a global company and a leading music and entertainment company, and we operate in more than 70 countries. So Warner Music Singapore essentially works as an affiliate under the Warner Music Group, and we, we represent the company locally across Singapore, Asia, Southeast Asia, really depending on the various business opportunities with the artists and with our clients. Um, our key proposition, I mean, if you kind of break it down to three or four areas, would be number one, we are a global company and working with a, a global label, you have access to a global network. That includes operations, everything from marketing to, a, to, to audience development, um, to everything around distribution and working with even other, other artists um, across the network, right? So I think that's a, the really exciting part about being able to plug in into a global network. Um, secondly, you would have the industry experts, we are a team of experienced music professionals uh, who are able to kind of work with artists in areas of marketing, a &R, promotion, distribution, and it's really, especially, you know, for artists that are developing, it's really a, a powerful resource to have, you know, by working with, with Warner. Three and four areas. Uh, the third point would be, uh, I think, brand recognition, right? You're working with one of the most respected, uh, well-known labels in the world. Uh, we've obviously managed artists who are superstars and also developing artists. So I think you have that brand and reputation that will really give you that boost to the artist's credibility uh, within the music industry itself. Fourth point I want to maybe share really quickly is really about access to technology and resources. You know, Warner has invested heavily in technology and infrastructure to really support the music industry and our artists, be, be it distribution or through distribution channels be it uh, data and analytics um, to kind of look at how do we help our artists and the marketing teams reach new audiences and really effectively engage audiences. Um, and then lastly, it's really about our continual investment in, in artists mm -hmm. and their development, right? It's from a financial perspective. We, want, mm -hmm. we cannot guarantee 100% success, but how do we really invest in 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 artists that we believe in. Hmm. You've talked a lot about managing artists, but I just want to take a step back and look at the wider music business. It is often divided into two big groups. One is the music publishing side of the business and the other side is the recorded music side of the business. What is the difference between the two? And when it comes to the music industry, there are a lot of terms that we hear like recording labels, artist management agencies, music distribution firms. Where do they fit in the bigger picture? And are these all players owned by Warner Music? Music group. Sure, let me try to break that, 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 that questions down a little bit. So let's start by looking at the two big uh, divisions within Warner Music Group, right? We have the Warner Music Recorded Music, Warner Recorded Music, which essentially is responsible for producing and distributing recorded music, like the name implies. Uh, that includes singles, albums, music videos uh, for a, a wide range of artists and genres. And this group um, really includes labels such as Atlantic Records, Electro Records, which looks at signing and developing artists and releasing their music to the public. So that's rec Warner Recorded Music as one group. 
The other group would be Warner Chapel Music. On the other hand, it's really a, a music, music publishing company, right? It deals with ownership, licensing of musical compositions and song, song lyrics. Uh, this group works with songwriters, composers to manage their copyright and collect their royalties and ensure that when the music is used in across different medias like film television shows commercials you know the artists would be managed and well managed in that aspect um and obviously warner chapel music has a massive catalog of songs and, and music right that mm. that the group licenses to other companies for use for for use for various commercial productions and commercial uh, opportunities so in a nutshell those are the two areas Warner recorded music and Warner Chapel music, recorded music and publishing. Um, so that that those forms the key pillars of the foundations of, of the music um, group itself. So essentially, if you look at how about artist management and distribution, so on and so forth, you know, within within Warner Music Group's businesses, and especially in Singapore, we have different departments, right? A and R, artist management, marketing, brand and sync. So these all fit under the group and we essentially we handle everything depending on the artist's relationship. The deals that the artists sign with us, how we manage them will vary based on uh, what services and support they require. Uh, essentially, that's the, the, the broad gist of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, we do have a lot of different services within the label itself. I'm sure. And depends on different geographical markets too, right? Um, but let's take a look yes. at this particular department that has increasingly been brought to the forefront, and that is the A&R, or Artist and Repertoire Department, which is, as far as I understand, in charge of scouting recording artists, getting songs that are suitable for them, and distributing that music. How does the A&R Department, or what does the A&R Department do exactly, and to what extent is that a revenue-generating department for them? Um, good question. I, I think a &R, in my perspective, is the bloodline of the company, right? It's really being in the forefront of music culture, um, being in the forefront of music communities and, and and looking at identifying amazing artists that can really create a cultural moment that's going to be long term, you know, be it identifying artists that will be prevailing in, in the way they present themselves, right? And the music is, that comes along with them. And it's also about really focusing on creating hit songs um and how do we make sure that they are chart topping in, in in that perspective right so broadly in a very simplistic terms that what a and r does right so artists and repertoire are looking at identifying artists creating music and getting the music to the, the world right and, and we want to make sure that we find the most prolific artists within singapore itself our artists our a and r team also handles artist management because we're a lean team uh so overall we look at it in two facets right um one having a good holistic artist development plan that really helps look at the planning and, and the breaking of an artist and how the artist will really go to market. That includes branding, music production, um, so on and so forth. Um, there's also the getting the artists out there, right? The second part is how do we start marketing artists, identifying opportunities for shows, concerts, brand opportunities uh, to ensure that the artist gives able to reach new audiences and to really break out to the wider group with the tribes within Singapore and also out beyond Singapore itself, right? So mm. that's a &R. It's super exciting. I love working on a &R. I think that's the most fun part of what we do, listening to music, meeting different artists. Um, it's really exciting in, in that space. And uh, we have a great team here in the one Singapore as well does that. Uh, with regards to your questions about your question about revenue generating, right? Mm -hmm. Overall, we drive revenue through recorded music, right? And that's the, the, the fundamental part. It's through the pieces of, 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 of our music. And essentially what we work with, in, again, it depends on the artists where, where they are in their careers, right? Superstars. Have obviously will be driving huge uh, potential revenue for us as a company overall. And we have developing artists who are up and coming and a lot of revenue will come in phases. And our role is to get these developing artists to the forefront and to become superstars eventually to kind of create, uh, you know, chart topping hits yeah. uh, for themselves. So that overall kind of generates the holistic view of revenue from a macro perspective, where you have artists across the different spectrums of their careers, mm. and we drive revenues 
from that perspective. Mm. And I do want to talk a little bit about the dollars and cents, uh, Gerald, because Warner Music had at a group level reported its third quarter financial results for the period ended June just a couple of days ago. If we look at operating income before depreciation and amortization, that was up about 18% on year at 275 million US dollars. What were the factors behind that? Uh, I believe it is a better showing. And what is the situation like here in Singapore? Yeah, so that's a great question. I won't be able to comment too much on what's being reported on the group level. Uh, your list, our listeners can definitely check that out online through official channels that's reported uh, out there. But what I would say is Warner Singapore has been growing positively year on year. Uh, it's been a nice positive momentum that we've been growing. And we've benefited definitely from the quarters of successful releases across various artists. Um, and also contribution from our, you know, our push and growth in our brands and partnership division uh, in Singapore. So all in all, it's positive momentum and we definitely want to keep going in that direction. Uh, so we're excited for what more we can do. Mm. And talk about positive momentum. Uh, Warner Music Group, of course, at a group level, said it is seeing improved streaming growth driven by a strong release slate and that this growth momentum is expected to continue into the current quarter. Your thoughts on streaming growth in Asia and within Singapore in particular, how does that affect your uh, music distribution pipeline in the near term? Yeah, so I believe streaming platforms will continue to innovate and engage the customers, right, to to bring the best products to the customers and really bring the bring bring the cost the best music experiences to music fans across the world. Um, Warner Singapore works very closely with all our DSPs, we call them, uh, to distribute and monetize our music across a wide range of digital platforms, whether it be Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, Deezer, so on and so forth. Uh, we also work very closely with our DSP partners to ensure that our music is properly promoted and marketed to users on those platforms. I think that's the benefit of working with Warner. We are able to kind of work very closely with the DSPs, and it's a strong proposition that we can bring to artists. Um, and this may also evolve, you know, working with the, our partners to feature our group, our, our artists, our, our playlists, and other curated content um, that we're able to kind of feature our artists on their platforms, right? Um, last but not least, we also look at data and we have also have access to the data and analytics to help identify new opportunities for marketing and promotion. So all in all, I think, you know, it's an uh, exciting time for streaming. Uh, you know, streaming platforms will continue to innovate and, and engage the customers to really bring across, across the best experiences. Um, and the partnership and relationship between Warner and our DSPs is very essential to the business. It's really, you know, looking at helping our artists get reach um, broader audiences, obviously generating re generating revenue from our catalog, um, and uh, us being able to provide a wide range of content and music to their audiences, right? So, mm. in a nutshell, I think it will continues to see uh, positive momentum in that space, and 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 it's exciting to see what how the platforms will evolve, you know, in terms of innovation and and mm. customer experience. I'm sure. And speaking of distribution, aside from the streaming players, I believe Warner Music Group also granted TikTok uh, for TikTok Music, CapCut and TikTok's commercial music library licenses to the music available under Warner Recorded Music and Warner Chapel Music. How significant is this for the Singapore business though? Yeah, so a good question and it's an exciting piece of news. But I, can't, can't, I cannot dive too much into the commercial confidentials of the deal. But what I can say is, you know, every time when when these deals are happening, it's it, it's it's exciting, uh, it's positive, and you know we con we want to continue this relationship between us and the DSPs as it really is the essential part of uh, the music ecosystem, right? And to enable our artists to reach wider audiences, to generate revenue from our music catalog, and to provide you know users with access to a wide range of content that we have. Um, as a music label, uh, you know, to their audience. So, so it's always a positive thing and we look forward to seeing how this will continue to evolve. And another thing, Singapore has seen a recent boom in concerts slated for this year and also the next. To industry insiders like yourself, how important are concerts as a form of music distribution and what is the strategic value of holding concerts in Singapore? And looking ahead, are you working with local authorities, say the Singapore Tourism Board, to hold more concerts for your artists in the near term? 
exciting times, right? So every time an artist performs in Singapore, it definitely benefits the overall music business. You know, we see benefits from the artist's perspective. They're able to get out and play, right? And meet their fans and, and, and provide these amazing experiences. Uh, we also see generally a, a, a growth in streaming uh, just because it's a moment that everyone enjoys. And in some occasions, from a business perspective, we see also brand opportunities uh, for the artists. So broadly, you know, it's exciting to see that this is happening. Uh, as a label, we don't generally organize concerts. And I'll just kind of share a bit more with that. Uh, there might be a few exceptions, but this is usually done by concert promoters, for example, Live Nation, AEG, just to name a few. But we do work very closely with them to, you know, depending on the artist's needs, kind of look at marketing support, uh, so on and so forth, right? Just to kind of make sure that we lend our support to make it a very, a very successful event. With regards to working with various government agencies, we do work, uh, you know, with various agencies, uh, particularly also in Singapore Tourism Board, on artist-related opportunities, but less so on like a concert. I think it's more like brand engagement and you know, campaigns where we see opportunities that happen. Um, so yeah, you know, I think all in all, it's a really exciting time. It's hard to predict to say that it will be a continuous boom in, 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 in concert and live shows, right? Uh, what I'm saying is I think, you know, probably because of COVID, what we're seeing is a pent up demand from the consumer side and also from the artist's perspective, uh, they're really excited and thrilled to get out to perform again. Nothing like playing live to an audience, right? So. I think Singapore will continue to be a, a space, a place uh, for music events. Just because, you know, we just celebrated National Day yesterday. Uh, you know, I'm Singaporean. I think we've done well in terms of being a leading destination for shows and concerts, right? We have state-of-the-art facilities with uh, the right ecosystem, the right infrastructure, the accessibility, safety so on and so forth, that really provides a wonderful concert uh, experience um, in Singapore. So, which is why, you know, we have uh, artists like Coldplay, who's going to be doing un an unprecedented six shows in Singapore. Uh, it was an amazing kind of uh, thing to see. So, yeah, I know we're, we're, we're excited to see live music come back. You know, we want to see more. Um, and I think Singapore is a great place uh, to, to be, you know, for, mm. for live shows. And aside from all that we've talked about, about concerts, about distribution, what would you say is the number one trend in the music industry right now? How does that influence the way in which you take the company forward? Well, I think, I think you know, it's hard for me to say that it's one particular trend or to forecast the future. Um, because number one, no one can predict the future. <laughs> but I would say trends come and go, especially in a very fast-moving industry that we are in or in the overall uh, you know business environment right it moving it moves very quickly so what i would say is um we continue to believe in in our artists and being very artist focused we'll continue to be very creative and innovative and adaptable in the way we work you know in the way we work with our artists with our partners to really take things to new areas to new audiences to new levels right um so there's no one music trend i would say that is something that we focus on. We look at it more holistically, at least I do. Um, so because music consumption is changing, the way music is experienced is changing, the way music is discovered continues to evolve, right? As technology platforms and also time for attention by consum consumers continue to shift. So we will remain con you know, focused on our strategy, uh, focusing on doing what's best for our artists and to bring the most amazing music to fans and audiences around the world. So I think that's how we are approaching it from a view perspective, you know, if I would kind of give that, that, that mm. perspective. Don't mind me just very quickly following up. You talked a lot about working with artists, right? Trying to scout for the right artists, but also a lot of that depends on X factor. A lot of that depends on how do you work with people, right? And it is very intricate and also very subjective. How do you deal with that though? Are, are, are there could you develop any guidelines for that or it is too customized according to the different artists then? So I look at art identifying artists, right? This is what you're saying. Like, how do you identify the right artists? I think there are many ways. Um, being plugged in from an AI perspective to the artist community, to the music community is very key. So we know what's bubbling and what's happening. Um, and we have the relationships that 
most important, right? To be able to kind of have conversations and, and look at exploring ideas uh, and then to excite artists from that perspective. But the other area is also the data side of things. Like I mentioned earlier, Wonder Music has invested uh, in technology that helps us look at data um, to help inform and guide us in any of the decisions. But I wouldn't say it's a pure data or pure creative view, right? I think it's a combination. Like it's an art, like it's a, a view of how do you look at the overall um, possibilities and, 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 and vision of, of what an artist can bring using the creative element and having being really plugged into the, the, com the yeah. culture and the communities, as well as looking at data to help um, align a couple of thoughts and to substantiate uh, the thinking. So mm -hmm. it's a combination, I would say. Mm. And let's talk about future plans for Warner Music Singapore. I believe you guys inked a global distribution deal with cross-ratio entertainment. Uh, what are some future plans for the company for the rest of this year? Yeah, uh, we're we're really glad and thrilled that cross-ratio entertainment you know chose to work with us. They are one of the largest labels in Singapore that's independently run. Um, you know, we while we have signed a global distribution deal with them, we are definitely looking at taking our partnership further beyond just that, that global distribution deal. We are looking at exploring um, broader business opportunities, be it artists uh, working on artists together, brands, events, and marketing. So we are really thrilled that we have them as a partner, and we'll continue working closely with them to explore, you know, more opportunities for all the artists that we work with, right? Um, within Singapore itself, you know, we will continue to focus on our artists across all our repertoires, be it international, C-pop, K-pop, to Singaporean artists. You know, on our roster, we have Nathan Hartono, Jamie, you know, Oh My Mating, uh, Yokes, and Sophie Fei Fei. So we'll continue working and, you know, pushing our, our, our music and uh, to the audiences that, that the artist deserves. Um, and last but not least, I would say we intend to sign more artists from Singapore and also artists who may not be from Singapore but based here, right? We are very open to adding value where we can. Um, and a little teaser which I would say is we are, you know, I haven't officially announced this yet, but uh, watch this space. Uh, we will likely have a first ever show by one of our Singaporean artists uh, in the next few months. So, you know, keep your eyes peeled on that one. So, yeah, it's going to be an exciting rest of the year for us. Mm, I'm sure. And talk about excitement, right? The education minister in Singapore, I'm not sure if you've seen that Facebook post, but he has issued a challenge to students to invite their favourite A-listers to perform for free in their school. And if they succeed, the ministry would then declare a school holiday the next day. Do you think we can get Coldplay to perform in our office and ask our bosses to give us a day off? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, no harm asking. So, we, you know, it's an exciting thing to think about. Uh, so maybe you can speak with your bosses and ask them and I could speak and then we'll see what happens. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> we will keep you guys updated on this front as well. So thanks a lot, Gerald. That was Gerald Ang, Managing Director at Warner Music Singapore. Thank you very much for joining us on Money FM 89.3. You can also tune into an extended version of this conversation on audio, Apple Podcast, and Spotify. Money FM 89.3.